Hello everyone. Welcome to this video tutorial on Introduction to DBMS by Simply Code. In today's session, we'll discuss various concepts of database management systems. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest technologies. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further delay, let's get started. Firstly, let us discuss the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what DBMS is and look at some popular DBMS softwares. Next, we'll understand the need for DBMS. And then we'll go through different components in DBMS and how exactly it works. After that, we'll look at DBMS architecture, types of database management system architectures. Next, we'll go through different data models and then we'll understand what is RDBMS, difference between RDBMS and DBMS, followed by different keys used in RDBMS. Towards the end, we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of DBMS. And finally, we'll look at some real life applications as well. So what is DBMS? DBMS comprises of two words. The first one is database. Database can be defined as a collection of data that is organized as well as structured. On the other hand, we have management systems, which directly interact with the database to access the data. In a nutshell, DBMS is a software to store and retrieve database information efficiently and conveniently. Some popular DBMS softwares used by various organizations are MySQL, Oracle Database, PostgreSQL, etc. Why we need DBMS? DBMS have come into existence in 1960s and since then it had the edge over traditional file system which had certain anomalies and drawbacks like data redundancy, inconsistency, privacy and security issues and various other factors. DBMS manages the information stored in databases effectively and effective management of data is key to organizations as it ensures the data is available to the users whenever and wherever needed. Data volumes continue to grow exponentially and DBMS are designed to manage large volumes of database efficiently. Components of DBMS DBMS can be divided into five major components. The first one is data, perhaps the most important component of DBMS. Certainly from the end user point of view in the data, because the primary reason behind introducing DBMS is to store and maintain the data within the database. Data acts as a bridge between machine components like hardware, software, and human components like applications. The next one is hardware. The DBMS requires hardware to run. Hardware refers to the external parts of the computer system, which includes storage devices like hard disk and other input output devices. It is used in managing and accessing the database. Software. Another important component of DBMS is the software, which controls everything and provides us with the interface to store and access the data. The software component comprises the DBMS software itself and the application programs to execute on the database. User access. User access or database access allows the user to access the data to and from the database by writing commands. SQL is widely used as a database access language to perform operations like creating new tables, inserting and deleting values, and perform updations that is on the data that is stored in the databases. Procedures. Procedure refers to the instructions and rules to use the DBMS. The user who is managing the database requires documented procedures on how to run the database. This includes understanding the design and structure of the database system, setup and login to the databases, etc. DBMS architecture. Database management systems architecture will help us understand the components of the database systems and the relation among them. The data is usually complex in nature and developers generally hide unwanted or irrelevant information from the user. This is called as data abstraction, which reduces the internal complexity to make the system more efficient. The database architecture has mainly three levels 
and hence it is also called as the three level architecture as well the first one is physical schema it is the lowest level of database architecture it is also called the internal level of the database schema internal level is the physical representation of the database that means it describes how the data is stored in the database logical schema it is also called the conceptual or logical level and it is at a higher level than the physical level this level basically represents the community view of the database and describes what data is stored within the database and the relationship among the data external schema this is the highest level in the three level architecture and closest to the user it is also known as the view level the external level only shows the relevant database content to the users in the form of view and hides the rest of the data there may be n number of external views for database for different users types of dbms architecture there are three different types of dbms architecture the first one is single or one tier architecture two tier architecture and finally three tier architecture single tier architecture in dbms is the simplest architecture of database in this architecture the database is directly available to the user the user can directly access and use the database for example let's imagine you want to get all the employee records from the database for that you can directly communicate with the database from your computer itself this is why this architecture is also known as local database system two tier architecture in two tier architecture the database system is located on the server machine and the dbms application is present on the client level these two are linked via a reliable network the two tier dbms architecture is used when we wish to access the dbms with the help of an application three tier architecture this is an extension to two tier architecture and also the most widely used dbms architecture it is similar to this two tier architecture only but there is another separate layer known as application server between the database server and the client in this architecture the client application doesn't communicate directly with the database system present at the server machine instead the client application communicates the communicates with the server application and then internally communicates with the database system present at the server data models in dbms data model defines how data is connected to each other and how they are processed and stored inside the system it also defines the logical structure and design of data in dbms data models are broadly classified into four types the first one is hierarchical model it was one of the first dbms models ever used in this model data is organized in tree like structure and connected to each other by links the next one is network model it is an extension to hierarchical model it can represent complex data relationships using graph like structure where the data can have many to many relationships The next one is entity relationship model. In this model, we represent real life entities in a pictorial form using different shapes. Finally, relational model. It is one of the most commonly used models. It represents the data in the form of tables. What is RDBMS? Let us now discuss one of the most popular data models in DBMS, which is RDBMS. RDBMS starts for relational database management system all the modern dbms like mysql oracle microsoft sql server are based on rdbms only rdbms stores the data in the form of tables which is basically a collection of related data this data is organized in the form of rows and columns the data that is placed horizontally in table is known as the row and the vertical arrangement of data is known as columns field Every table is broken up into smaller entities called fields. Fields in the employee table are employee ID, employee name, job, department number and salary. RDBMS versus DBMS. Let us now understand the difference between RDBMS and DBMS. Though both of them are used to store physical data in the databases, there are some difference between them as well. RDBMS stores data in tabular form whereas DBMS store data in individual files for an application like XML or JSON format etc. 
RDBMS deals with vast amount of data, whereas DBMS is designed to handle small amounts of data and is meant for small organizations. RDBMS can support multiple users. On the other hand, DBMS is limited to a single user. RDBMS also supports distributed databases wherein you can manage and have the access for multiple databases at the same time. Whereas DBMS do not offer the support for distributed databases. These are some differences between RDBMS and DBMS. Types of keys in DBMS. Keys play an important role in relational databases. They are used to establish a relationship between the tables. It is used to fetch information from one or more rows in a table. In DBMS, there are several keys which are almost interrelated to each other. But we look at some important and most used keys in RDBMS. The first one is primary key. It is one of the main key that uniquely identifies every row in a table. Super key. Super key contains additional or other sets of attributes that can uniquely identify a row within the table. Candidate key. Candidate key are selected from the set of super keys. The only difference is it shouldn't have repeated attributes. Hence, it is also called as minimal super key. Foreign key. It is used to create a relationship between two tables with the help of an already existing table. Basically, it acts as a cross reference between two tables. Let us understand these keys with an example. Let us consider a table called employee, which has different fields like employee ID, employee name, job role, department number, PAN number, Aadhaar number, universal identification number, which is UAN. Now for the employee table, we can take employee ID column as a primary key because it uniquely identifies each record in the table. The super key can be PAN number, ADA number or even UAN because two employees can have the same name and by definition, a super key is a set of different attributes which can uniquely identify the table and hence uh, different employees have different PAN number, ADA number and UAN as well. Candidate key can be taken from either of these three super keys which we have taken earlier. Except for the primary key employee ID, other attributes can be candidate keys. So I have taken UAN as the candidate key for this table. Now each employee works in various departments and we cannot store the department name in the employee table. That's why we'll link the already existing table that is the employee table with a new table by taking the department ID as primary key and creating new attribute named department name. So in this case, department ID is considered as foreign key. Advantages of DBMS. One of the main advantages of DBMS is it controls data redundancy. Redundancy means storing the same data multiple times. By having centralized database system, unnecessary duplication of data is avoided. Data integrity. Integrity means the data in the database is accurate and consistent. DBMS ensures that the data is correct and consistent for all the users as it handles multiple databases at the same time. Data privacy and security. Data privacy is paramount for every user and DBMS allows only authorized users to access the data from the database. Hence, DBMS provides improved data security under any circumstance. Data consistency. Data inconsistency occurs when the same files are located in different locations. But with DBMS, we can achieve increased data, in data consistency because any changes in the database are immediately reflected to the user. Ease of sharing data. DBMS allows a user to share the data in any number of application programs. Users can also have access to the database simultaneously and share the data between themselves. Backup and recovery. DBMS takes care of recovery and backup on its own. Users are not required to take regular backups because the DBMS does it for them. It also restores the database after a system failure or crash to prevent it from reverting to its original state. Disadvantages of DBMS Well, to store a huge amount of data, one needs a huge amount of space as well. Eventually, it requires additional hardware and software 
which are relatively of higher cost and because of its constant functionality the maintenance cost are also high as well complexity dbms is an extremely complex software initially one may find it difficult to operate different functions on dbms because of its complexity end users must have proper knowledge while handling database systems otherwise it may result in database failure speed and performance issues dbms is made to handle extremely huge data and queries and if the resources become limited at any point and optimization is not done properly the database will become slow and it reduces the performance of the whole system increased vulnerability dbms system works on the centralized system that means all the users from all over the world have access to this database hence any failure of this dbms uh, will impact all the users so there is a high chance of uh, losing the data so these were some of the disadvantages of dbms finally let us look at some of the applications of dbms dbms is widely used in various fields nowadays some of them are banking DBMS is used in the banking sector to store the customer information, account details and all the transactions done on a daily basis. Additionally, to keep track of the loan amounts, account balance sheets, ATM and deposit records etc are maintained with the help of database. Education. Schools and universities manage their students information like personal details, course details, exam marks, grades etc. All this information is stored in databases and is managed by DBMS. Finance. The database management system is used by companies and corporations to store information about revenue, sales, holdings and purchases of financial instruments such as stocks and bonds and it also stores real-time market data to enable online trading. Healthcare. Hospitals and medical centers use DBMS to store the details of the patients and assist them with their diagnosis and treatment procedures. It also helps in maintaining patient medical record history, documents, previous bills, etc. Manufacturing. Manufacturing companies make products and sell them on a daily basis. To manage the supply chain and track the production of items in factories and warehouses, maintain records of all details of the product like number of orders purchases bill amounts etc we use dbms travel dbms is used by railways and airlines to store the booking information of passengers departure and arrival timings and finally e-commerce online shopping is the new normal for everyone nowadays e-commerce platforms store and access details of customers purchase information payments and addresses etc in the database using dbms with that we have come to the end of the session that's all for today's video i hope you guys have found it informative and helpful if you have any further queries on any of the topics covered earlier feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to resolve all your queries stay tuned to the channel for more interesting content like this until next time Stay safe. Thank you and keep coding.